What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hanging Heavy. As always, I'm your boy, Dizzy Crater. So today, I'm having to do the show a day early. I normally do this on a Friday night, but today's Thursday, and I'm going to post it today also. So it'll probably go up uh, Friday at uh, midnight, so that's uh, Friday morning, Thursday night. I'm recording it at Thursday night to go up Friday in the a.m. So hopefully Friday at midnight, so uh, the first second of Friday, this shit is up. So uh, thank you guys that are returning to the show, uh, return listeners, I appreciate it. Uh, you know what it do, you know what it is, you know how we do, oh, look at that, so, today's the fucking 5th of September, and I have four downloads for the month of September, or no, that's seven downloads in the first five days, so that's more than one a day, look at that, my numbers are climbing, Ooh, so let me pull up the quick statistics as I like to do. Uh, 100% transparency here. I I, I ain't lying, y'all. So um, if you're new here, go ahead and uh, download the Podbean app. Uh, This is where I host Hanging Heavy. Uh, If you download the app, uh, you can uh, access the show. You get automatically notified when I upload. You can like, comment, share, subscribe. And uh, you can probably find all your other favorite podcasts. Because I'm sure they're hosted here too. So fucking, it's a win-win. If you don't want to do that, uh, you can find the podcast on uh, Apple or iTunes podcast, whatever the fuck they're calling it now. Or also on the Google Play Store. Just type in Hanging Heavy Podcast and I'm sure you'll find it somehow through all the layers of bullshit that they're hiding me under. Because I'm a, I'm a little guy. I ain't, the big, I ain't them big dogs. This ain't the Joe Rogan experience by any means. Um, so yeah, you can find it on the iTunes, Google Play. You can uh, go to the website, hangingheavy.podbean.com. Another fucking thing that Podbean does is not only do they let me upload, they also offer me a website so that you can go to. You can download the episodes if you, if you fucking want to cram them all at one time. If you can't stream them, if you're going to be on a plane... You can download, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, you can do all that beautiful jazz. And uh, if that's not your thing, uh, Podbean also allows me to post this on uh, YouTube. They do it for me. It goes up a couple couple minutes, sometimes hours later than when it goes up on the website. It instantly goes up. So if you don't want to download any bullshit, just check it out on YouTube. Go to the search bar and type in Hanging Heavy Podcast. And you'll find me there alone with my dick in my hand. <laughs> I, I, I need new friends. Uh, it's so hard to do this alone. <laughs> so, like I said, I have seven downloads for the first five days of September. Uh, the first download comes all the way fucking September 3rd, two days ago, with one download. Wednesday, September 4th, two downloads. And today, with the fucking highlight of the week, four downloads. And uh, let me show, uh, or let me go ahead and read uh, where my audience comes from. Thank you, Podbean, for providing such statistics. So, two of those downloads came from the United Kingdom, two of them came from the United States. What the fuck? One of them came from Canada, one of them from the Netherlands, and one of them from Singapore. So all you uh, cross-country international listeners, I appreciate you. And uh, hopefully uh, you like my kind of swagger, my brand. What the fuck? Okay, so the two downloads from the United States, I'm going to break it down even further. One of them from California. What's up, Cali? What's up, West Coast? And the other coming from fucking Massachusetts? The fuck? This is the first time I see Mass. Shout out to fucking the Patriot fans out there listening. Hopefully you're, uh... uh, Well, fuck. Hopefully you're listening. Goddamn. Uh, One of you is, at least. (laughs) 
Uh, I'm a I'm a Texas boy, but I'm a Patriot fan. I'm a, a Red Sox fan. Uh, the Celtics kind of suck. Uh, I, uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm not really an NBA fan. I don't really follow baseball, but I've always liked the Red Sox. Um, let me see. I don't have any data to show for Australia, but fucking one download from Ontario. What's going on, bud? Let's go to Timmy's and uh, get some bear claws. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just shout out my top four or my top downloads and obviously fucking comes back to this one episode i guess i just stuck it good i guess i i did this one real nasty number one with fucking three downloads spooky scary skeletons who would have fucking thought that one again i guess that's my fucking that's what I should do. I guess I'll start a whole another YouTube page and just fucking read creepypastas. I guess, uh, I mean, fuck. There's one person that I like to listen to because his fucking voice is deep as fuck. And I'm going to give him some free fucking, some free airtime. I'm going to give him a shout out. If you're ever into listening to scary stories or fucking... Shit that uh, you you don't want to listen. Stories you tell in the dark. (laughs) Chicken soup for the teenage soul. (laughs) Uh, No, so this dude, his YouTube name is Corpse Husband. Corpse as in a dead body. Husband, all one word. And that dude's voice is fucking butter. What I would do if that guy were to fucking yell in my butthole. (laughs) Um, so yeah, um, also this show kind of doesn't really have any fucking form of, uh, promotion or, uh, marketing. I don't have any social media. I fucking, I'm against it personally, but if you can do me a favor and fucking shout me out on your social media, any platform, tell them, Hey, you want to waste 30 minutes to an hour listening to some dumb asshole? talk about stupid shit or sometimes even some interesting shit maybe i'll teach you something i learn something new every day when i when i prepare for the show uh yeah so i mean fucking i guess we'll get into today's show rich and rare so um in my uh, off time i decided i didn't have enough uh, segment music to go over some certain segments, so uh, I I threw I threw one up I, I I threw one together today. It's a nothing intricate by any means, but it, I mean it's got a it's got a nice little bounce to it. So that's what I named it. I announced I announced it I announced it. Oof! I titled it "Bounce Me." So give me that little bounce, baby. Ooh. Ew. Okay, so Netflix has some new content up that's pretty good. First thing I wanted to mention is the GOAT put up a new special. That person being fucking Dave Chappelle. His new special is still as cutting edge and socially riveting as all of his uh, previous all of his previous stand-ups and any notion that is Dave <laughs> people still want to silence him but <clears throat> that ain't gonna happen you can't stop the mega force that he's become sure he makes some jokes and comments that aren't PC but fuck you soft ass bitches that's the whole point of comedy there aren't any lines that should be tiptoed upon besides that freedom of fucking speech people I can only speak for my fellow Americans don't fucking vote to lose this right people not even that far from us get in prison for such things they get in prison for fucking saying upsetting things uh, uh, things that would uh, people would deem uh, inappropriate and 
not even as far as fucking Canada. For all you Canadians, what's up? Tell me what that's like. Uh, we have it good here, so stop trying to fuck it up for everybody else. People have died for us to give us this right. Fuck that! I don't need that shit in my life! Excuse me there, I was a little slow on that. But quick shout out to all my service members who are braver than I am. Anyway, back to Netflix. A while back I mentioned uh, Rocco... Rocco's Modern Life had a revamp or a sequel or whatever you want to call it. And I was kind of disappointed about it, but hey, it's still Rocco. I hold that near and dear. But there's another cartoon that got a shot at redemption. And I thought I would, uh... I thought it came out fucking sweet. Now, don't get me wrong. While I watched this show when it originally aired, I was uh, off-put by the marketing decision they took when Hot Topic, not a sponsor, took it as their mission to get as much merch out there. Looking back at it now, that's a yikes, chief. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about none other than Invader Zim. Zim! Get off my lawn! Hi, Dim! What are you doing here? I live here! You're gonna have to speak up! <laughs> you won't get away with this! What? <laughs> Uh, my son loves this part. <laughs> my son fucking cracks up on that part. He's seen it more than I have. The characters are exactly the same as I remember. The animation looks more crisp, not different. And they even play around with different animation styles that adds to the concept of the movie. If you ever wanted the show back, if you ever watched the show back in the day, I highly recommend you watch the sequel, the movie, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> I'm also more into some of the gearhead shit, so I like watching car shows and uh, shows about vehicle restoration. And they added one of the Canadian variety. So, damn, Canada's getting a lot of love. So, the people on the show are pretty Canadian. They're all nice and shit. And the show is called Rust Valley Restorers. But this, like most American shows, is a little less about the actual restoring of said vehicles. And more about the people doing the show. Than actually doing any restoration. Now... This is what bugs me about reality TV, but hey, there's cool cars and such that uh, I'll just say, uh, Sander Bar. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, if you're into any of that shit, uh, I highly recommend those. I don't really catch too much Netflix because I'm too stuck into my YouTubes, but... Every now and then, uh, I'll, I'll I'll give her a little a little watch, you know. Um, a f a friend of mine uh, wanted me to toss in this uh, movie story, but I could kind of give a fuck about it because it's stupid. There's some asshole that fucking likes his characters to naturally age, so that he doesn't have to pay anyone to do makeup or special effects or CGI. Because he's some fucking twat that likes uh, his uh, his movies to be art pieces more than movies, you know? But whatever. Fuck that guy. But shout out to my boy Malbolgia. He wanted me to toss that in, but I said, eh -eh. Sorry, bud. That sucks and I don't care. <laughs> so, hey, uh, at least you can settle for a shout out. Rich and rare. I guess while I'm on the topic of uh, shout-outs, I wanted to give another shout-out to my... God damn, that's fucking loud. Excuse me. 
wanted to give a shout out to my boy Josh all the way out in Japan. Uh, I don't know if he's listening somehow, but you know what? Fucking, you're the real MVP, baby. I miss you and I love you. Can't wait to see those tits the next time I see you. When I see you again, whoa. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, have you ever heard of the word or term Vanta Black? Well, let's start. Surrey Nano Systems, who are the creators and sole owners and proprietors of Vanta Black. According to the website, this is uh, what Vanta Black is. Vanta Black registered is a super black coating that holds the world record as the darkest man-made substance huh the darkest man-made substance blacker than the blackest black times infinity so yeah it was originally developed for satellite born black body calibration systems <laughs> But its unique physical and optical properties have resulted in finding widespread applications. Vanta Black is available in two versions, either directly applied to services using vacuum, vacuum deposition technology, or, or in the case of Vanta Black S-Viz by spraying and then post-processing. Vanta Black absorbs virtually all incident light making it ideally suited for addressing a host of light suspension and light management problems. It reflects so little light that it often is described as the closest thing to a black hole we will ever see. With such exceptionally low levels of reflectance, Vanta Black produces some startling optical effects. When it's applied to a three-dimensional object, Vanta Black is so black that it becomes extremely difficult to discern any surface feature and three-dimensional objects appear to become two-dimensional. In fact, Vanta Black absorbs more light than just visible light, and it's equally effective across a whole range of the spectrum that is invisible to the human eye. It is used in applications ranging from space-borne scientific instrumentation to luxury goods, and it's available to deceive and its ability, excuse me, to deceive the eyes opens up a whole range of possibilities in design. So this technology isn't new. Oldest records that I could find dated back to 2014. So that's a long while. And they have even more time since then to develop it even further, which they have. It's pretty amazing stuff. I, I found an article mentioning Vanta Black that was too good to pass up. <laughs> So, a 60-year-old Italian man stumbled into an art installation at the uh, Masaraja Museum in Portugal, excuse my uh, pronunciation, but the art piece is known as Descent into Limbo, created by Anish Kapoor. Now, this piece is actually a, three, a deep three-dimensional void that descends two and a half meters, and for us dumb Americans, that's a bit over eight feet into the ground. The thing, makes, the thing that makes this relevant is that the artist, Kapoor, gained exclusive rights in 2016 to solely be the only person to use Vanta Black in art pieces. So this man literally fell into what looked like a cartoonish painted black hole that was 2D painted onto the ground. Fucking coyote shit, you know? Now, he had to be hospitalized, but he's fine. He's fine. Speaking of tum stumbling, smooth transition, Desecrator. Oh, why, thank you, Desecrator. I stumbled upon another article that was posted at the end of January of 2019 on the website nucleoneers.com. The title reading, Dream Recording Machine. Play back your dreams. Written by Samir Ahmad. I'm not going to just read it verbatim as I'm not a scumbag stealing content that's not mine. So I'll paraphrase it. <laughs> Japanese researchers, of course they're Japanese. Well, they have figured out how to decipher the images your brain creates 
by estimating your brain's movement during its dream and uh, they created a machine that records said movement and this data is then inserted into an algorithm it's then re it the algorithm then re-engineers your dream and enables playback so it works with two processes while they claim they have a 60% successful rate they have uh, nothing to look forward to other than progress that's pretty fucking dope now I don't know about you but I I think that's uh, some crazy ass shit that uh, would be interesting movie if it were to go bad but uh, you know uh, science is pretty solid yes, now science. so <laughs> there's that I'm gonna take that little cue to uh, get myself a refresher beverage right now I'm drinking Newcastle brown ale the good shit because apparently if you buy it in a 12 pack it's the shit from England and not the garbage from California <laughs> rich and rare so uh, I don't have uh, much going in the way of uh, what the fuck news but one story stands out to me uh, and it's coming all the way from down under that's right you Aussies you are just as dumb and selfish as us Americans. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> so, uh, I refuse to name this stupid, and I'm going to use their vernacular on this one. Cunt. <laughs> but a, a vegan massage therapist from Garraween, Australia, believed that her neighbors were using a barbecue as a new tactic to win the war on the block. She's quoted saying, they've put the barbecue there, so I smell fish. All I can smell is fish. I can't enjoy my own backyard. I can't go out there. She believes that they aren't cooking their food for their family, but using this as some form of chemical warfare against her. She's claiming that her neighbors are breaching residential laws and telling courts it's deliberate. They're doing it deliberately crazy much <laughs> she's also cited citing in her lawsuit aside from the smelly fish that they smoke cigarettes in their garden and the smoke wafts over to her side and she is also frustrated by the sound of their children playing basketball and playing in their yard the fuck well, her case made it to the tribunal and a Supreme Court judge who threw her case out the fucking window. <laughs> Siding with the normal neighbors stated saying what they're doing is living in their backyard and home as a family. But of course, this bitch ain't having it. And she filed an appeal, which was then almost immediately dismissed. Yet again. <laughs> what a dumb bitch. Uh, you know, your yard is your yard. If you don't want to go outside because they're smoking in their yard, then stay inside. Wait till they're done smoking and then go outside. What the fuck? What an asshole. Some people are just... They feel entitled to the world and to those people. I say, fuck you. So I guess to make sense of today's episode theme, BMW is wilding out with their latest advertising stunt. But for me, this is kind of shady and it falls flat. That joke will make sense in a second. Trust me. So this is September. And at the Frankfurt Motor Show, 
they premiered their third generation BMX, BMX, oh, excuse me, they're selling bicycles now, BMW, their third generation, excuse me, I'm drinking, their third generation BMW X6. Ah, the BMW uh, event, they will show, okay, excuse me. So at this BMW event, they will show off the first and only vehicle to be painted in, you guessed it, Vanta Black. Blacker than the black is black, times infinity. See, so now my joke that I opened with makes a little more sense now. <laughs> uh, well, the main reason behind hiding every single line and curve on the body of this car literally the only reason you unveil a new car model at a car show like this is to, is to display its new light up grill yay so not only do they not show off the fucking car itself they show off how much of a gimmick this stupid fucking grill is and they also get to hide the dud of a car that they designed is at the same time i'm guessing the black is also trying to get people to look up what the actual car looks like with normal paint so that you can see all those lines that they're hiding with vanta black and uh let me save you some time here it's another boring ass looking bmw <laughs> they had to make it cool somehow because a lit up grill is pretty fucking stupid I think I, I think I want to see my grill light up in the dark. Uh, uh, the body is lackluster, so I guess Vanta Black. If you if you spray it up with Vanta Black and murder the bitch out, it looks cool. But what for? If they aren't releasing this as a model option, you can't just buy Vanta Black cars. Think of the fucking legal battle they would have to go through if somebody were to crash i couldn't see the car in the dark well no shit it's the darkest material fucking known to man you idiot so it's just to bring attention to their already fucking boring ass car line nice try but fail fucking stupid ass bmw well, I guess with the last bit of shit that I want to talk about, they uploaded the trailer for the 14th season of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and it looks fucking bonkers. I love how loony they've gotten. I can't wait for it to premiere at the end of this month. So, fucking fall is the time for TV, I guess. Uh, so, also, premiering this past Tuesday, the Mayans MC finally got started with uh with the second season and the intro brought everything and everyone that hadn't caught up to speed uh up to date and it already started deep in the shit i feel it's a, a good spin-off of sons of anarchy and it being based in and around mexico with hispanics and mexicans uh it hits closer to home than when it was just a bunch of white boys in california i mean those white boys were fucking cool as fuck and they were badass so uh, it, it all works <laughs> the writing in the first episode is a uh, is a tell for the whole season the, and with that it should be a sick fucking season it's just as dark and gruesome as sons of anarchy and it has the same feel but it's totally different at the same time the first episode, they brought in some former members of Sons of Anarchy. That being Happy. If you know anything about Sons of Anarchy, you know who Happy is. Uh, he made a brief appearance at the end of the last season. And uh, now he's back. <laughs> Fucking Happy was a sadistic badass. Uh, for some reason, they lay like a dark, looming feeling with the addition of him. So I can't wait to see how this pans out. This show has an identity all on its own and i hope that it lives just as long yet coming to a cleaner end than sons of anarchy did uh i guess uh, i'm at my time so uh, 
thank you for sticking around. I hope today was a good episode. Uh, I'm your boy, Desecrator. Uh, this was Hanging Heavy. Uh, much love and rich and rare.